right, today we're gonna to show you how to change your spark plugs on your 2.5 liter Duratec engine. Now the procedure also applies to the older 2.3 liter Duratec engine. The gap's the same, the spark plug torque is the same. The only thing that's different is the spark plug part number. So I'll link to those down below, the latest and greatest from Motorcraft, so you guys have a reference for that. Now the reason why I say to use Motorcraft and Motorcraft only is because other spark plug brands out there just do not agree with the Ford ignition systems. For whatever reason, from the 80s all the way up to 2017, if you put in aftermarket plug, you're gonna have issues afterwards. So just stick with Motorcraft. And on this particular application, they're actually, I think, made by NGK per Motorcraft specs. So they're an Iridium fine wire plug, so they're a pretty darn good plug already to start with. So anyways, let's go over to the vehicle and get started. First things first, clean the entire area before you ever pull one bolt out. That way there's no dirt getting down into each one of these uh, spark plug wells that could potentially get into the engine itself, the, the cylinder. So we'll go ahead and clean it really well. Concentrate in these deep, dark areas around the boots. All right, next, we're gonna go ahead and start unclipping each one of these. There's a locking tab right here. You push down on it and you pull, put it up to the side, and of course, do the same thing with each one of these. Now, all these cylinders are exact, done the same exact way, okay? So, uh, you can just follow my lead on the first cylinder and repeat for another three times on there. There's a hold down bolt. That's eight millimeter to hold it down. Get those out, like so. And then we'll take those bolts and we'll get them out of the way so there's no chance of them falling into the cylinder. Once the bolts are out, the quail simply pulls right out of the engine. Now once it's out, you wanna make sure there's no oil down here that would indicate a valve cover gasket leak or any kind of cracks or dry rotting that would indicate you need to replace the boots or coil itself. So give it a good look. It should look like brand new, just like this one. Get any dirt off of here, okay? And put it to the side. And repeat. Again, inspect it really well. Get all the old grease out of there. All right, we're good to go. So let's get the dust and dirt out of here once again. You want to do the valve cover gasket one hit once again, and then the spark plug wells. And you want to get deep down in there around that jam nut for the spark plug itself. After that, once again, look at each one of these spark plug well holes to make sure there's no dust and dirt that may have gotten stuck in there and it's not coming out with the air before you actually pull the plug out. Now, if I didn't mention it already, you wanna pull these plugs out on a cool engine. The reason being is that it's more comfortable to work on, but also the fact that these heads are aluminum and you can actually pull the threads out when it's really hot like that because it gets soft. Uh, so, you know, warm to cold is good. Okay. There's been some conflicting information, okay, uh, from Ford and other manufacturers. They all say don't do it hot because, like I said, the aluminum is softer and it can pull the threads out. They used to say do it cold only. Well, now they're saying it should be warm. So, you just can't win. This one. Uh, you know, I pulled it in the garage, stuff like that, so it's definitely not cold no more, and I call it warm. But in general, in my experience, I've never seen spark plug threads come out. Um, they're pretty strong on these heads nowadays. The metallurgy or the alloys or whatever, and there you go. It comes right out. Now, when you're pulling it out, the old ones don't matter so much. But you do want to use an extension, spark plug socket, and a swivel, okay? Universal of sorts. Now, this one has it all. I'll put a link to them down below. It's a great little set made just for this. And the point is, when you're going back in and you're screwing it in and got the ratchet on there and you're kind of torquing to the side, 
if you don't have a uh, universal down here, when you're torquing on the side and tightening up, you can actually side load the plug and crack the porcelain in there. So you don't want to do that this way. If I side load a little bit, it's just going to turn and it won't even affect the position of the, the socket. It's something to think about. Now, once that first plug is out, what I do is stick this way down deep inside of there into the cylinder almost, and I'll blow it out again. And the reason being is you'll see a lot of dust, dirt, rust, and debris come out of there. You don't want that in there causing your threads to have an issue going back in. Now, what I'll also do is I'll do all this work to one, put the new plug in, seal it up and then move to the next one. You don't want to pull all four of these out and then you're messing around and a bowl of bolts falls over or whatever and they go into all the cylinders. Just concentrate on one cylinder and get it done and get it sealed back up. That way we're safe. Now technically these newer plugs have a plating on them that does not require any anti-seize. Me, I don't trust the plating 100% so I go ahead and I put a real small amount on there. You want the high temperature nickel anti-seize, okay? I'll put a real small amount. First though, make sure you check the gap on your spark plug. They're not always perfect out of the box. So you wanna make sure you check it. Now the gap on the 2009 2.5 liter is 44 thousandths. So I gap mine, they're a little bit off, they're a little too big. So now they're perfect and I can go ahead and install it. Another good reason to use spark plug sockets is they either have a rubber boot inside or a magnet that keeps them from falling out so you don't damage them. So go ahead and put it in there and thread it in by hand like this. And you should be able to thread it in all the way down until it seats. And this way you don't damage the threads going back in, cross thread it, anything weird like that. So this one's good to go. These got a lot of threads on them. So they're nice and strong. At this point, I bottom knot right there, dead stop. What I do, um, if you don't have a torque wrench, okay, is what you can do is just turn your wrench another eighth of a turn maybe or so. Right there, you really feel it start tightening up on there, done. That's it. Now before putting your coil back in, make sure you put some dielectric grease down here at the very tip where it goes over the porcelain and the center electrode of the plug. And you simply drop it back in there nice and straight. It should go right in just like that and stay. Get these started by hand. And then you simply snug it down. Plug your connector in it until it clicks, like so, and that's it. That's all there is to it. You repeat the same process, precautions, tips and tricks, for each one of these cylinders.